Hey there, how's everybody doing today? I'm Mark, this is West Coast Supercars and Classics, and today I want to show you around the Porsche Panamera E-Hybrid. Uh, this is our personal car, and I have actually never made really a video to uh, kind of show you all the features of it, take it for a drive, all that kind of stuff, so I decided today's the day to do that. So let's take a look around. First off, you notice that the Panamera has very much the Porsche branding look to it. This particular one is a rear wheel drive car, not an all wheel drive. Although the current model of e-hybrid is a four wheel drive. It's called the 4e hybrid. This one is a 2014, which was the first year they came out with the plug-in. While we're at that subject, let's have a look at the uh, plug-in area here. So on the left side of the car at the back, you got your typical Porsche flap, which opens up. On the other side, you have fuel. Let's look at this side here. I think I've showed you this on other videos. There's the fuel side, so your high test unleaded goes in there. And this is our vehicle charging. There's your plug there, your J1772 plug. I got my handy dandy plug here. So what you'll see when you first plug it in, you'll see the yellow light lights up. Then it goes green and starts the battery starts flashing, which shows you it's in charging mode. Once it's fully charged, those will be solid and then they'll go dark. So if you leave the car overnight, whatever, it'll just be, it'll be blank in the morning. Now this is locked. So to pull it out, you can't just pull it out. You have to actually tell the car that you want to do it. And to do that, you need your key, your key fob, or your fob, which is this guy right here, which looks like a little car. <laughs> it's so silly. But anyway, you just unlock that, goes yellow again, unlocks, and then you can remove the plug. Let's set that aside just for the moment. <clears throat> you can either approach uh, from the rear or the front, front door or the rear door, it doesn't really matter. They've got sensors and it'll unlock automatically as soon as you touch the handle like that on the inside. And let's have a look at the rear interior room. There's a little bit of <laughs> stuff from my daughter in here, but uh, it's pretty clean. Um, here you have at the back, you got your nice leather seats. These are heated. Um, and this is an optional uh, four zone climate control system in here that we've got. So here you have your, your uh, seat setting, your ventilation, and then your temperature and fan controls, window lock, and then this is a screen control here. And there's actually a rear screen that goes up at the back to protect you from the sun if you want. I can't do it right now because I've, I've removed the piece of hardware that goes there that is attached to the cover. And that was because we had quite a bit of gear a couple of nights ago, some uh, video gear and camera gear, so we needed more luggage space at the back. Back here you've got the usual little compartment for your cup, which has junk in it, of course. And, oh, I hate to think what's in here. Let's have a look. Oh, nothing. I must have cleaned it out. Anyway, so you have your little uh, cubby here for, for more beverages and a little bit of storage in there. And then this seat comes down and there's more storage in here so there's a little shelf so it's pretty neat you can use that as a uh, armrest and then you can store things in it as well while i'm at it actually in this model the rear seats fold down creating an absolutely huge luggage space so let me show you what that looks like I'll go around the back on this car you just press a little button on the wiper and the lift comes up automatically for you. It's got a very low low back lift here, it's very good. This car has a little bit different rear deck because the batteries are under here. So there's your cargo compartment. I don't know if you can see how big that is. Because this is a big car. That's a nice wide long cargo compartment. You got cargo net on this side. <clears throat> got tie downs here and a little scuff plate metal scuff plate here at the back 
But anyway, you can fold both seats down. You can fit, I fit lots of bags of mulch and stuff. Believe it or not, I actually go to the Home Depot and pick up stuff like mulch in this thing. Uh, well, before we had the Mini, uh, this was my go-to car for, for like loading large items in, within reason. You know, I'll put, I'll put a tarp or something down to protect it so it's not getting grime and stuff in it. But uh, it's very practical. One touch button just to lower it back down again. Now, this profile in this car is the five-door version. It's not the Sport Turismo. Sport Turismo is their latest design, and it looks a lot more like that kind of station wagon. Well, they call it in Britain and in Europe, they call it a shooting brake right so that's it's got even more cargo room so if you're looking for like max cargo room but you don't want to have an SUV you want the shooting brake version makes a lot of middle-aged men weak at the knees to see cars like that believe me I've seen it happen all right let's put that back up let's get down to the driver's area here and passenger Obviously you've got a multifunction memory seat for the driver and the passenger at the front. You've got your nice Panamera S sill plates here. I think is a very elegant interior and very elegant, understated, not trying too hard. And I, I like it. It's not austere, I don't think, especially with this sort of fighter jet buttons we got here. Let's hop in and have a look. Ah, great, somebody's running a leaf blower now, just what I need. Okay, so we'll... Hey, there's Karen! With his GT4. Bye, Karen! Uh, you may recall we shot a recent episode of our new show, Car Chat, at KZ Auto, which is Karen's uh, company down there on Alpha Street. So thanks again, Karen, for letting us do that. We're going to be shooting another show soon. Don't know what the location is going to be, whether we're going to go down there again or not. But anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll put a link up here to that show for you. And uh, also, thank you to Alex and Donato for doing that show with me. It was a lot of fun. Okay, let's get back to this deal. So we're going to turn this on. Fasten seatbelt, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not driving anywhere. All right, so to start off with, let's just shut that off. We don't need the stereo. Okay, so let's look at the readouts here. I've showed you this before. There's your, your charge. We're below 50%. I've been running a fair amount on electric. There's your oil pressure, which is non-existent because we're not running the engine. There's your power output gauge, which is very useful. This section down here, tells you when you're in your charging mode. This gives you your percentage of power output. Tachometer, naturally, we know what that is. And then here's your multifunction display over here. So you can, right now I've got the trip showing. <clears throat> you can see what we did. We started at uh, 9.30 this morning. Um, ride time was an hour and 12 minutes. Distance was 55.4 kilometers. Fuel consumption was 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, average speed 48. 17 and a half degrees outside, blah, blah, blah. Now you can scroll through, using your thumb here, you can scroll through different functions. So eventually your tire pressures would come up, your lap times for sport chrono, energy flow, temperatures for different fluids. There's your tuner. Here's your navigation. So you've got a little bit a navigation binacle here. There's your phone. And we're back to the original screen. And you can reset a lot of this stuff and recalibrate it. Um, here you've got your water temperature and your fuel, which happens to be full. All right. Um, oh yeah, you remember, of course, on a Porsche, everything has to be on the left side. The ignition has to be on the left side, although it's not a key that you take out. It's just this weird vestigial thing. Then on the door, you've got your memory functions here on the door, your lock, your mirror functions. So you can fold the mirrors in and out like so.
and your warning system for proximity so that's when somebody comes up alongside you in your blind spot you'll get a warning on each side of the car there so that's a nice little feature you'll notice the steering wheel is very uncluttered you just have your shift buttons on either side your little paddles so to speak so on the front you're going to shift to a higher gear at the back you pull you're at a lower gear okay and you've got your little thumb wheels here this one is obviously for that little instrument binacle that we looked at just before and this is simply for your radio controls if you were i really like these thumb wheels they're very useful because you you've got it right at your in your hand here you've got the shifter blah 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 you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel and you don't have to press buttons very much i like that about it obviously you got your normal controls wiper stocks i'm not going to get into that there's your sport chrono all of the sport chrono porsches have this iconic clock there and it also mirrors in here gives you your lap times and all that kind of stuff when you're on the track so looking over to here <clears throat> Your top half is all your climate controls on either side. So you've got obviously the ventilation's off because I don't want the noise from it. Temperature, fan, and these are all like just straight toggles like so, right? Just give them a little shove. Got your different ventilation settings. And then at the front, you have heated seat control and ventilated seat control for both driver and passenger here and then going further down you've got your different driving modes and suspension modes on the left hand side and your power modes on the right hand side plus that rear shade i was telling you about which i can't put up right now since i've removed it at the moment uh you got your sport plus sport and the car always starts off in e-power mode which is your full electric down here you got a little bit of this the cigarette lighter we don't smoke we don't need it um, got your cup holder here you got your really fancy schmancy hidden cup holder here where is it now there it is i love this thing this is so tricky there's another one over here There we go. Glove box down here. Nothing too incriminating in there. Good. That's right. Okay. I mean, this is a daily driver car, so there's a fair amount of junk in here. And you got a storage cubby here. Full of junk. And you have USB control here. And an auxiliary input here for your stereo as well. So yeah, you know, it's a, it's a normal, good functioning interior. Up here you've got more of this sort of fighter jet theme, if you will. Um, this is a one touch to open the sunroof. What's that again? Airbag controls, lighting. Here you can turn your parking sensors off, that sort of thing. And these are your garage controls here. You've got a fairly decent sized screen here. It is touch sensitive screen. Got your navigation there. information this would be anything you want if you're in your uh, radio mode you've got your radio details and information car information here so this is again this would be our total statistics for the life of the car since we've had it 55 86 kilometers 6.3 liters per hundred kilometers is the average fuel consumption 38 kilometers an hour was the average speed and you see i can go back and forth with this touch screen if I want this tells me what my expected range is with this tank of gas 873 kilometers 
But you can also use this little wheel to do the same thing, to go back and forth with all these functions. This, com this car has a lot of different statistical aspects that you can access. It'll tell you how many minutes the engine's been off, what the consumption was today. So this tells you the elapsed time that the engine was not running today, okay? <clears throat> so it's fairly straightforward, but I, I do a lot of the stuff through the steering wheel. That's basically what I do. But it is fun to be able to access some of those statistical functions. Oh yeah, there's an interesting thing. Look at that, 24.8 kilometers was done with the engine off today. Isn't that cool? All right, uh, last but not least, let's have a look at the engine compartment. So to open that up, just give that a yank. <clears throat> Nice aluminum hood, lifts up very easily. It's got the gas struts on there. And lo and behold, there's your engine. It is, as stated, a three liter V6 uh, supercharged engine. So that's an Audi sourced engine. I believe it's 330 horsepower. So as I said, this is the 2014 model, 416 combined horsepower out of the electric and gas supercharged engine so your 0 to 60 time is roughly low five seconds somewhere uh, it's a big car it's heavy it's like more than 4,500 pounds I believe so uh, it does still get down the road very well uh, and it ret retains that amazing fuel economy that you saw you're talking about today's trip under six liters per hundred kilometers for a big full-size car so just keep that in mind if you're if you're disappointed about the overall acceleration the new version has more power it has like 460 combined horsepower it's quicker uh, it, it has a longer electric only range and I do use this car a lot in electric only range for local trips just because why not right it's a lot cheaper to, to use that way so I'll show you the dynamic use of the different driving modes, the Sport, Sport Plus, the Hybrid, uh, the Electric Only Mode, the E Mode, what we call E Power in Porsche parlance. If you go for the Turbo Hybrid, which is the top of the line model that has 680 horsepower and all-wheel drive, it starts at over 200 grand Canadian and if you really want to do a number on your wallet, you can, you can option it out. I, I think just out of morbid curiosity, I, I priced it out on their website and I got it up to like $280,000 or something absurd like that. You can customize and put all sorts of carbon fiber options and yeah. Anyway, so again, not an exercise for the faint of wallet, but you can do it. All right, let's put this back down. Cha-ching! You don't have to press on it like you did with the 911. Yeah, it's, it's got a nice styling on it. You know, I get a lot of looks on the street. Why? Because this car looks fabulous with this wrap, don't you think? And thank you to M2 Graphics once again for this fabulous wrap job designed by Mick Zerme and put together by Mike Merriweather, who's the, who's the hands-on vinyl man. Yeah. Mike never saw a piece of vinyl he didn't like. Right, Mike? Anyway, yeah, M2 Graphics, you guys, they're on Langford Parkway. They did this fabulous job with this satin metallic finish. So today we're taking a drive up the Malahat, which is a wonderful road, uh, especially this time of year, I should say, not necessarily in the wintertime when it's all icy and snowy and so forth, but yeah, it's a nice drive up here. There's lots of stuff to see, lakes and beautiful views and all that kind of stuff. This car, the Panamera, is absolutely perfect for your road trips. I mean, it's got great stereo, super comfortable seats, all the bells and whistles and fun stuff that you want. Um, and it's got performance too. So it gives you, I think, an ideal blend of the performance aspect of Porsche plus the comfort and convenience of a family sedan. Right now we're cruising along, well we're 
not even doing the speed limit because I'm just taking it easy because we're doing a, a shoot. Um, but we're cruising along at what, 1200, 1300 RPM. Uh, the gas mileage is going to be awesome in hybrid mode here. Because this car has a full hybrid drivetrain, it has a lot more things than just a simple stop-start feature for the engine. I mean, we've got a Mini that has the stop-start feature, which you can defeat, uh, but the Mini will turn itself off when you're at a stoplight, for example. The Panamera takes that quite a bit further with the hybrid uh, drivetrain. So, for example, when you're going downhill somewhere or you're you're basically coasting the car along when you're driving well the engine will turn off so right now for example well it just came back on I'll demonstrate this for you I'm pulling away I've stopped obviously the motors off I'm pulling away and you'll see as I start pulling away first we're in electric only mode still in electric only mode second gear and I'll put my foot down a little bit more and the motor will come on at some point. Well, it hasn't yet. Okay, so we're in electric drive right now. Fifth gear, we're doing 60 kilometers an hour along Shawnigan Lake Road here. It's a nice windy road. I'll just put the sport suspension on, firm it up a little bit, one level. It says on the display, sport chassis selected. Now at this point, I'm in hybrid mode I've turned off the e-power button so technically we are in hybrid mode and the motor is not running we're doing 70 kilometers an hour um, so if you want to regenerate power a little bit you do your braking a little bit early and uh, gently and you stay in that zone all right now we're gonna hear the motor come on here it goes as we accelerate away. The engine note is quite unobtrusive in this car. Some of you may really like that. Others may want a little bit more of a sporty feel. I think that that's the drawback to this 2014 design over the current car, the 2018, 2019 uh, current model, because the current model, in my view, sounds better. It's got the same kind of uh, set up with the engine the three liter engine but it's tuned a little bit differently it to my ear the exhaust is tuned differently it sounds a little bit more aggressive And as we were driving, the gas engine turned off again, so we're in electric mode now. So what will happen is as you're driving along a country road like this, nice windy country road, enjoying yourself, you'll notice you're getting phenomenally good gas mileage. So if you're cruising around, you know, between, you know, 50 and 70 kilometers an hour on these back roads, you're going to start seeing fuel economy in the six to seven liters per hundred kilometers range which is very high gas mileage now let's put it in sport mode you'll hear immediately what happened there the engine note went up now let's step on it a bit off we go now i've got greg chasing me with his motorbike his brand new bmw sport touring hybrid bike it's a nice bike, so he'll have no trouble keeping up with us, but it's a lot of fun. Now we're hustling along. And that's when you really notice the interesting and fun dual nature of this car. It's incredibly smooth, but it's fast. And that's one thing you've got to realize about the these Panameras is that they're 
very capable cars. Yes, they're not as fast as 911s for sure, but the 911 does not have this level of comfort and luxury and obviously ridiculous cargo capacity at the same time as being an actual car, right? So uh, that's an advantage that you're getting with this car. And obviously in the hybrid version, you're getting this phenomenal gas mileage too. So we'll go into Sport Plus mode. Now that's gonna firm up the suspension all the way, lower down the car a little bit more. You still probably can't hear the motor, but we're doing 2000 RPM. I just had to look at it there because it's a little shady. I don't know if you can really hear it all that much, but what you'll notice with this car when you're going down the secondary roads is the ride quality is fantastic. I mean, you're gonna get into other cars after driving this car and you're gonna think, oh, yikes, that's terrible. Honestly, that's what happens. You get completely spoiled by this car. The suspension is so sophisticated and so good. I wouldn't call it like a full-on luxury car, like a Bentley or something like that, but it's not far off. And it, when you want to hustle, it's got that Porsche handling. So very little or no body roll. So you, you know, you're definitely paying some money for the sophistication of the suspension in this car, but you're getting something for your money. You're getting a lot for your money. And especially in a used car, that's where I really feel the value shines in this particular automobile because it does tend to depreciate. It's a luxury car, so a lot of them do depreciate quite heavily. And so as a used car, you can pick up a lightly used certified car you got warranty left on it and you know it's still pretty current in technology so you might really be interested in picking something like that up if you don't want to buy it new by the way please excuse my uh, my internal camera today I'm trying out uh, using my iPhone my new iPhone to do this uh, footage so I'm still experimenting with the mount and I've got to get another mount for it so bear with me here There's a big, huge gauge on the left of the tachometer in this car, which gives you the power output. It shows you the regeneration mode that you're in. So when you're braking lightly or you're coasting, you're in regen mode. And it shows you your power output. And as you go up in your power output at a certain point, like at around 20%, the gas engine will kick in. You really don't notice it after a while. It just comes and cycles in and out all the time when you're driving and you know you're chit-chatting with somebody or you're listening to the radio or some music or whatever so you don't notice it it just seamlessly transitions in and out now we're going to sport mode immediately the throttle jumps up in sport mode so you've got a faster throttle response I use the sport mode most of the time when I'm on windy roads mountain roads stuff like that because it's a lot more responsive. And I'm using the automatic transmission, I'm not shifting manually. Although you've got the paddles here, you can shift with. All right, now let's stick it in Sport Plus. Now it's in Sport Plus, so now you're gonna feel a little bit more of the contours of the pavement. So when you get onto rough pavement, obviously you're not gonna keep it in this mode because it's you can get into a more comfortable mode if you want. And it's got a sort of an air suspension, this particular model. It's not just a magnetic type damper system. That makes it different from the 911, let's say. And because of that, it actually changes the ride height depending on what you're doing, okay? And you also have a sort of a lift mode, which I'll show you as well, where the car lifts right up so you can go over rough pavement or speed bumps and whatnot. Let's take it out of Sport Plus mode and we'll put it back into hybrid mode and let's see what happens. We're doing about 80 kilometers an hour, but we're going downhill. So now the, the motor is off. Now we're in pure electric mode. Quiet as anything. So now let me put it back in e-power mode. I'm just gonna flip the e-power switch. I'm forcing it into electric mode now. So now we're traveling the same stretch of road 
now we're 100 percent in electric power so you just do this whenever you want and that's the genius of these kinds of cars you can just select the most efficient drive mode uh, whatever you, your heart desires if you really want to hoon around well you just stick press the sport plus button and off you go if you want to be in miserly fuel economy mode you can do that and if you want to go in pure electric mode which is what I do a lot around town you just go, keep it in e-power um, which is its default when it starts up and you're in electric car mode so you go do your grocery shopping whatever it is that you're gonna do you're driving an electric car and that is something that a Tesla cannot do obviously a Tesla cannot switch itself into a gas motor mode so if you're on a long trip you are going to be an electric car and you are going to have to recharge it after a certain amount of travel okay we're going to stay in sport plus mode for a little while here and we're back on the highway let's give it some let's give them some gas This thing is a quick car, it's a really quick car. I think it'll do the quarter mile in about 13 seconds. Cause you know, I've got some very hairy chested cars and you know, they definitely, they definitely get your attention. And, uh, but I really enjoy this car and you know, as a daily it's, you can't beat it. You really can't beat it. Upcoming this year later is going to be the Porsche Taycan, which is their first all electric car. It was first introduced as the E Mission, or the excuse me, the Mission E. Um, I think it goes up to something like 600 horsepower, and it starts at 400 horsepower. I think for the base version. There's some controversy about what the final design is going to look like, but it looks uh, quite a bit like a Panamera, but it's shorter, shorter wheelbase, so less rear seat room, less cargo room. And it remains to be seen how that product's going to take off. I really don't know uh, how it's going to do, but I'm very curious about it and interested for ourselves. So we'll, we'll have to see how things pan out and what it looks like when we get down to the to sort of ordering stage whether we want to give up the Panamera experience and go to full electric or or what else we want to do and we don't know right now we'll have to see so I really hope you've enjoyed this little ride here and exploration of the Porsche Panamera as you can tell I love the car and well it's the best car we've ever owned so I don't have to say anything else it's been awesome and uh, let's see, what's our combined fuel economy right now? We're at 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers right now on this trip. And that involved a fair amount of mountain driving and some country road and some freeway. So gives you an idea of what the capabilities of this car are. And I highly recommend that you just go down to your Porsche dealer, your Porsche center and spend some time check out what they've got in their used inventory their new inventory uh, don't overlook the Porsche brand or the Audi brand but you know don't overlook the Porsche brand because they're they're producing cars that they've never produced before it's a it's a new market they're as good as anybody at integrating all these technologies together so now if you're listening Porsche <laughs> help me out here I want to go and do more Porsche stuff in the future so I hope at some point if I can grow the channel thanks to you guys uh, I can do more high-end stuff with Porsche I would like to get out there and go and look at the Taycan right now you know I would like to go to a car show I would like to go to a test track and try it out and tell you all about it so I hope that soon I can have the opportunities to do things like that so here's hoping